Even though this video is titled Whatever Happened to Heather Menzies, I'm going to give away the ending right now. Heather passed away a few years back in 2017. Now with that said, Heather's life was a pretty darn interesting one and totally worth taking a look back. So without any further explanation, let's get going. First and foremost, Heather was Louise in the classic movie musical The Sound of Music. Such a great movie and such great performances by everyone involved in this film. I never tire of watching this show or listening to the soundtrack. The role of Louisa was one that Heather cherished. Years ago, I remember watching an interview with Heather where she talked about how much she appreciated working on that movie and that she still enjoyed it when people recognized her for that role. So with all that said, The Sound of Music is not my favorite movie with her in it. You see, in the 70s, Heather absolutely rocked it in a little horror movie called Yep, you got that right. So what's it all about? Well, this movie involves snakes, and I really don't want to say any more than that. While promoting that film, Heather talked about the appeal of working in the horror genre. She said, those movies often stood the test of time, and sss is definitely proof of that. Side note here, that photo of Heather holding Harry the snake shows just how fearless this lady was. A few years later, Heather upped her game even more with the Roger Corman-produced movie Piranha, which was directed by a young Joe Dante. Now, who is Joe Dante, you ask? Well, none other than the man who brought you movies like Gremlins, The Howling, and Inner Space. I have talked at length about the television adaptation of Logan's Run in another video, but let me just say here that Heather was delightful as Jessica Six in this short-lived television series. Sure, it didn't have the budget of the feature film, but it had heart. And it had a great cast. Along with Heather, you had Gregory Harrison as Logan Five and Donald Moffat as an android named Rem. Around this same time, Heather showed up on Vegas. I remember reading something about Heather and that show star Robert Urich at that time. I can't remember if it was in TV Guide or somewhere else, but that's when I knew that Heather and Robert had tied the knot a few years back, 1975 to be exact. And it turns out, the 1975 was a pretty darn decent year, not just for Heather and Robert, but the entire world as well. After all, 1975 was the year that videotape recorders were introduced to consumers. Bill Gates and Paul Allen started a little company that would help to revolutionize the computing world, and it was also the year that director Steven Spielberg decided that no one should ever feel safe in the ocean again. But I'm getting off track. We're here to learn about Heather's life today. So let's jump forward to 1979. That's when Heather appeared in the TV movie Captain America. After that, there was an appearance on T.J. Hooker. But for whatever reason, Heather's on-screen appearances really seemed to be slowing down by the time the 80s rolled around. As far as I can tell, her last screen appearance was in 1990. So what happened? Well, I've told this story before. The names have changed, but the story is essentially the same. You see, Heather and Robert wanted a family. Ultimately, they would adopt three kids in all, two girls and a boy. More on them in just a little bit, but let's just say that anyone who has ever been a parent knows that sacrifices are required. And it would seem, at least to me from the outside looking in, that Heather made the choice to focus on her family. That choice became even more important when Robert announced in 1996 that he had been diagnosed with synovial sarcoma, a rare form of cancer that attacks soft tissue in the body. Over the course of the next half decade or so, there would be many ups and downs for the Uric family. Sadly, in 2002, Robert passed away from the disease. At that time, Heather established the Robert Uric Foundation, and according to Wikipedia, spent most of her time during her final years devoted to that organization, which raises money for cancer research and provides support for cancer patients. Now, that isn't to say that Heather didn't find time to reflect and celebrate her own career. I remember reading an article about a decade or so ago where Heather talked about the movie that started it all, The Sound of Music. It was at that time that I realized that Heather and her family resided in my neck of the woods, the good old state of Utah. That article talked at length about the lifelong friendships that were made by the children who starred in that film. It was heartening to know that in addition to her family, Heather had a network of friends to support her. Sadly, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Heather herself would also pass away from brain cancer, of all things, on Christmas Eve, 
2017. Her passing was without doubt devastating to everyone who knew this wonderful woman. She was remembered not only for her work on television and in movies, but also for the strength that she had throughout her life and the inspirational influence that she had on her own children, two of which ended up working in the field of medicine, no doubt hoping to help others the way that both of their parents had been during their time of need. A worthy legacy for sure for both Heather and Robert, who end of the day were great entertainers, but even better human beings. All right, anyone recognize the feller to the left of Heather in this Sound of Music cast reunion photo from a while ago? If you said Nicholas Hammond, also known as TV's Amazing Spider-Man, then you are as big of a nerd as I am. Now it's your turn. Please share your memories of Heather in the comments section. While you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thanks so much for watching. One other thing that 1975 is notable for is that on January 30th of that year, inventor Erno Rubik applied for a patent for his then named Magic Cube. I'll let you decide whether or not that was a good or bad thing. <laughs>